Hey everyone and welcome back to Sonia's Prep. Um, Shabbat prep for me starts with making sure that I have enough bread in my house to feed my family for Shabbat. So I do these challahs about once every three weeks, once every four weeks so that I can have them. I freeze them as soon as they're cool to the touch and then I don't have to worry about bread anymore. And if you want to get my full challah recipe, you know I've tried hundreds of challah recipes and I always keep coming back to this one because as a busy working mom, this just works. It's quick and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to fiddle that around with anything. So I'll definitely have this recipe linked down below for you in the description box. Love how gorgeous they came out. So nice and fluffy. And they really come together so, so quickly. If you're new here, I just wanted to quickly introduce myself. My name is Sonia and on this channel I share with you about my Orthodox Jewish life, how I meal prep for Shabbat and during the weekdays in general, hoping to provide you with loads of inspiration. And if you enjoy this type of content where I take you along in my life, I hope you guys will give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. Now let's get prepping. One of my most popular recipe requests are these zucchini pancakes that I make. I'm going to be using one large zucchini that I'm going to be grating. You could either use this one that I'm using right here or a box grater or even a food processor to grate your zucchinis. To that I add in a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and then dropping in about two medium or two large eggs into the mix. And I season everything with some salt and black pepper. You could add in garlic powder if you would like. My oldest son is right here helping me out. He saw me in the kitchen and wanted to join in. It just gives them such a huge sense of accomplishment that they did something all by themselves. So I definitely let them join in when they want to. While he's busy over there mixing the batter, I'm going to be using a pie pan. You could use any kind of pan that you like. You could use a square one, a circular one, a long one, whatever is to your liking. I'm going to be spraying that very generously with some oil and placing the entire batter inside of it. Meanwhile, our oven is preheating to 375 degrees and that's going to be spread out nice and even so we don't have any bumps. And separately, I made this garlic mayo, very simple to make. It's just mayo, garlic, dill, salt, and black pepper. And I'm gonna be repurposing this dip in a few different ways. I'm gonna be making deviled eggs. So I just boiled my eggs and scoop out the yolks into a separate bowl. To the yolks, I add in about two heaping tablespoons of the garlic mayo. I mix that all thoroughly, make sure everything is mushed up, and then fill up each egg with that delicious mixture. You'll see my daughter Aviva joining me. She saw me in the kitchen and wanted to join in. So I wanted to give her a small task that she can do. And I have some dill over there that I wanted to garnish the eggs with. So I sent her to wash her hands so that she can get that going. She was doing such a great job with it. And as we're spending time in the kitchen, I do try to talk with my kids and just use this as a bonding time, especially because days are busy. We have so much going on, working and school and doing things with the kids and homework. So this is just a nice bonding experience. After about 15 to 20 minutes of the pancake baking in the oven it is fully ready and i'm going to just be flipping it over onto a nice plate that i would love to serve it on and to top the zucchini pancake after it's completely cooled i'm going to be lathering on the garlic mayo that we made so i make this dressing or a dip and i'm going to be repurposing it in multiple ways 
and of course Aviva wanted to take over and smear it on the zucchini pancake. So once that's done, you can garnish this in hundreds of ways. Um, I'm going to be using some cherry tomatoes and dill to garnish mine, but you can make it as extravagant as you would like. Another beautiful presentation of these zucchini pancakes are to stack them one on top of another and it's like a little cake, but it's obviously savory. It's also beautifully presented and a lot of people enjoy it this way. This next recipe is a way to use up leftover chicken or meat that you have in the house that you want to repurpose. So I'm going to be using puff pastry dough over here. This is just dough that I find in the freezer section of my local kosher supermarket. I sprinkle on some flour to prevent it from sticking and roll it out. Um, maybe to another, i don't know a few inches from where it was before and then remove those edges right at the top and at the bottom of it and you'll see why later we're going to be designing the puff pastry in a beautiful fashion separately i used the leftover chicken that i had and i just sauteed onions and garlic and i added in the shredded chicken salt and black pepper and that was it and on top of the chicken, I added in some mustard. I was supposed to add the mustard to the dough, but I forgot. So I figured instead of me taking all of the chicken out and adding the mustard in, I just put the mustard right over the chicken. It's gonna be fine. It was so delicious, guys. I highly recommend this. It's a perfect way to use up leftovers and it was all gone. Once all the seams are closed, flip the dough seam side down and we're going to be designing the top of it now. So those two strips that we have cut off, place a little bit of flour them, on them to prevent them from sticking and just roll them out a little bit thinly. And I don't need such thick pieces, so I'm going to be cutting each of those pieces in half, which is going to produce a lot more dough for us to work with. And you'll see just how I design the deli roll. So obviously it's absolutely not necessary to design the top of it, but it's just a beautiful presentation, especially when you're hosting, having people over Shabbat dinner. It just makes it uh, have a wow factor in my opinion. And I'm going to be basting this dough, or at least Aviva will be, um, with an egg wash. Egg wash everything really, really well. I just had one egg over there that I beat up and then sprinkle on um, sesame seeds and everything but the bagel seasoning i alternate sesame seeds on the actual dough and everything but the bagel seasoning on the x's To make the contrast with the everything but the bagel seasoning i dip my finger into the egg wash to get it to be wet and then i dip it into the everything but the bagel seasoning and just dab it on the x's i was so proud of this it looked gorgeous and stunning and i was so sad that i completely forgot to take a picture of it afterwards after it was baked so basically you bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes until everything is cooked through but this is what it looked like before it went in the oven I teased this fish recipe on my Instagram and all of you really loved it and wanted to get the recipe for it. If you're not following me on Instagram, definitely go ahead and do that. And so to get started, I'm going to be using egg roll wrappers. I take about, I don't know, three or four, however much you can handle uh, egg roll wrappers, divide them in half and cut them down. And then after you cut them in half, combine all of those halves and cut them in half again to create small squares. Mm -hmm. 
Now it's time to fry up these egg roll wrappers. So I have a pot of oil that's already heated up. I drop them into the oil and this literally takes about three seconds on each side. It cooks up really, really fast. And I just make sure to flip them over so that they don't have a cone shape so that they don't like fold up into each other. So I do uh, flip them over quite quickly. Once they get this golden color, they're ready to come out and I place them on a paper toweled plate just to drain the excess oil. When hosting, I do prepare one per person. I also make a few extra just in case that they break. So that's all set aside and ready to go. Now separately, I'll be using salmon and cut them into cubes. So I take my salmon, divide them up, cut them up into little cubes, and we're going to get ready to marinate them. Into a bowl, I place in two teaspoons of teriyaki sauce and three teaspoons of sesame oil and half a cup of your favorite barbecue sauce. You could also add in some garlic powder and mix all of that really well. And that is your simple base for your marinade for the fish. Now I place in all of my cut up salmon into the bowl and give everything a mix and leave it on the side to marinate for a few minutes. Using a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper, I place in the fish in a single layer and bake it in a 350 degrees between 10 to 12 minutes uncovered. The salmon component of our dish is also ready. Now it's time to assemble the entire thing. On a plate or a platter, I place in the fried up egg roll wrapper and top it with some thinly sliced avocados. On top of that, I'm going to be adding in some cucumbers that I've sliced very thinly using a mandolin slicer. The cooked salmon goes over the top and I drizzle on some teriyaki sauce right over the top of it with some spicy mayo. You could either use a piping bag to make nice beautiful strips and designs, comes out gorgeous as well. Top everything with some scallions and everything but the bagel seasoning. This is a show-stopping fish appetizer or a main course and I usually serve it using a wooden board and I have a bunch of these over there. This next recipe are these gorgeous eggplants and this is how you make it. You cut up eggplants into circles, fry them up, season everything with salt and black pepper, add in a good drizzle of lemon juice or lime juice over the top. Using a store-bought tahini paste spread, I'm going to drizzle that over the top as well as some date spread. Put that on top as well and I have some crushed garlic and chopped cilantro on the side that I'm going to be topping this with. This just comes together very quickly because the tahini comes in a bottle, the date syrup comes in the bottle. The most work that I had to do was cutting up the eggplants and frying them up. You could also place them into an oven and roast them that way, which will be maybe faster and easier for some of you. But this is so delicious and I'm very thankful for Yana for showing me this recipe on Instagram. You know who you are. Next up is this carrot salad. We call it markavcha. I use a mandolin slicer to slice them very thinly. I do have this linked in my Amazon storefront. So if you're interested, click into the description box and you'll see it right there. I think I used about two very large uh, carrots over here. And then you need to add in about two teaspoons of salt and massage it really, really well with your hands to the point where the um, carrots start to release its own juices and start to become a little bit more soft and bendy. So I do that for about two to three minutes until it's soft. And as you see now, when I squish the carrots, you see all of that juice coming out and that's how you know you did a good enough job. Separately, I'll be chopping up some dill so I can garnish the salad with it.
To create a nice balance of all the flavors, you're going to need to add in two teaspoons of sugar into the carrot salad, also a little bit of black pepper, a teaspoon of cumin, as well as a teaspoon of coriander. I'll also be grating in two garlic cloves into the dish. You could omit it, you could add in as much as you like or as little. It, it just adds a really nice flavor to the actual salad. Top the salad with about a quarter cup of chopped dill, a splash of vinegar, and some oil that you heated up. I would use a, about a quarter cup of oil, avocado oil or olive oil. Heat that up and then pour that steaming piping hot oil over the garlic and it just cooks the garlic a little bit and infuses it with so much flavor and it's absolutely delicious another really yummy side dish that i've been doing lately is cutting up some idaho potatoes into a baking tray and adding in onion soup mix with some oil and that's the only flavorings that i use everything is already in there and it has such good flavor in it so i top that with the mix mix it with the oil and call it a day mix it really well pop it into a 500 degree oven and mix it every five to seven minutes until it looks um, crispy like this and it's just so nice i place it back onto the plata onto the um, hot warming tray and wait for my husband to get home and it just becomes softer and like crispier on the bottom soft on the top it's just really delicious I wanted to take a few short minutes and address what's been going on in the media with Kanye West and his anti-Semitic rants. It was so hurtful to see those kinds of comments and I'm sure a lot of you have seen his full interview and everything that he said which was just shocking and um, a lot has been said about it already. I just wanted to give over a little message of just love and appreciate each other, be kind to one another. Um, because at the end of the day, that's what the world needs more of. There's so much push for division and strife, and that's the reason why the media and politics feed off of it, and um, don't let them win. Just be kind to one another, and I'm just so thankful, and I wanted to say thank you once again for all of my subscribers who uh, subscribe to the channel and watch my content you're always so loving so kind and i so appreciate you bringing so much positivity and love into the comments and i really appreciate each and every single one of you thank you with all that being said i hope you enjoy all of these new recipes that i tried to put together in this video i just recorded a little bit every single shabbat something new so i can bring something interesting for you in this video let me know how you enjoyed this video leave me your comments down below happy prepping and shabbat shalom from my family to yours